turn quickly in your Bible as time has elapsed, but I pray you'll stay focused with me. I want you to turn quickly in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, we're going to do quite a bit of reading. I just want to share something that God really placed in my heart. The Lord really helped me this morning uh, to get through it. You know, I'm one emotional being, but he really helped me to get through it as I got really emotional thinking about some things. But I pray that it would be an encouragement to all of you here today. I pray it would be an encouragement to all of you here today. Luke chapter 1. And how many like this set behind us? Do you like this set behind us? It's a nice set, right? Edie, Edie did a great job along with her team. So grateful for what they do and the time that they, the time she took to put it all together. So grateful for that. All right, so Luke chapter 1, you should all have it, right? <coughs> Excuse my voice. This is every December, January, so guys get used to it. It's every year this happens to me. I'm not sick. It's just I don't know what's going on here. It's like when you get older, you feel it in your bones. I know every December, January, my voice goes like this. But um, Father, just help me now, Lord, to just communicate your truth, the truth of your word to your people. Encourage all of our hearts here today by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> So we, during this time, you're going to hear about the birth of John the Baptist, <clears throat> excuse me, the birth of, of obviously Jesus, because how many know he is the reason for the season? Amen. Let's say that together. He is the reason for the season. As a matter of fact, let's qualify who, let's say who he is. Jesus is <clears throat> for the season. That's right. Jesus is the reason for the season. And so it's not Santa, it's not the trees and all that. Those things speak about the Christmas season, right, about being joyful, jolly and all that. But let's never forget that Jesus is the reason for this season. And so you hear these stories each and every year about Mary. We're going to hear about Mary next week. But today I want to just focus on something <clears throat> that God really put in my heart to just encourage our hearts. Now we're going to do quite a bit of reading, but there's really one main thought that I want to just end with that I hope will encourage you here. You know, there was 400 years of silence where the Lord did not speak to his people. 400 years of silence. You know, people say today, you know, how come we don't hear from the Lord? It's never happened before. It's happened before. But today we do hear from the Lord. We have prophets. God speaks through prophets. Obviously, he speaks, number one, through his word. He speaks by his spirit. He uses life circumstances, things around us to communicate things to us. The scripture says that the heavens declare his glory. The heavens, the stars speaks about God, right? So God is still speaking. But there was 400 years where God did not speak at all. Nothing said through the prophets. There was just no word from God. And we find in Malachi chapter 4, the last thing that God said to his people was found here. It says, look, I'm sending you the prophet Elijah because the great and dreadful day of the Lord, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. He says, his preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Too much to get into all of that, but I just want you to focus on the last thing that was said. The last words that God gave to his people was that there where he's going to send a prophet, right? One like Elijah. It won't be Elijah, but one like Elijah who will turn the hearts of the children to the father and the hearts of the fathers to their children before that dreadful day, whenever that day is going to take place. So now let's jump into Luke chapter 1. I wanted that so you can see that before we read here. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, look at verse 5. If you have it, say, got it? got it? That sounds like a few of you. Come on, verse 5. I want to hear from all of you. Got it? All right, it says, in the time of Herod, king of Judea, the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God. Look at me for a second. Notice, they were righteous where? In the sight of God. They didn't just look the part in front of man, but when nobody was watching, they were still in right standing with God. That's very important. It doesn't matter what man, how you perform in front of man. That goes for me. It goes for you, right? It matters how God sees us in the private times. You all with me? Yes? All right. It says this. He says, um, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, <clears throat> observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both well advanced in years. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you ought to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. 
Many of the people of Israel will be, well, many of the people of Israel, now this is what we just finished reading. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. Now, look at me. That's a smart man. He didn't say she was old. <laughs> see, you see that? You brothers understand what I'm saying. All right. Verse 19, the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. And when his time of service was completed, he returned home. And after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord had done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Jump down to verse 27, please. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to the circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father, which speaks about the fact that not only was he mute, but he couldn't hear. Uh, they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed, and he began to praise, he began to speak, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. Look at me. I'll try to get through this faster than I did this morning because of time. So we see here the first word spoken next time is the very, are the very same words that were spoken in Malachi. So from Malachi, now here we have in Luke where the Lord is saying that now he's going to bring forth one who's in the spirit and power of Elijah. So we're going to get back to it a little bit. But I wanted to just take, let's just go through this story. I know we read it, but let's go through the story before we get to the main truth for today for us, okay? So here we have what we call PKs. Anybody know what PK stands for? Preacher's kids, right? Because here you have Zechariah, who's from a descendant of Aaron. He's a priest. But then also it says this about Elizabeth, that she's a descendant of the priest, right? She's a descendant of Aaron as well. So these are preacher's kids. These are kids who grew up in the things of God. You know, they understood about the writings of the Lord. And obviously there was a lot of prayer because that's what the priests would do. They would pray for the nation. So these are preacher's kids. But not only are these preacher's kids, but these are some good preacher's kids. Preachers understand what I mean by that. I mean, like, they, they, they just model, you know, PKs. See, these are preacher's kids, right? And not that other kids don't model PKs. That's the beauty about PKs. Like, we told our kids, all of us here, we told our kids, you be yourself. You're not Pastor Maurice's uh, son and daughter. You're not Pastor Adrian's sons. You're not Pastor Tyrone's sons. No, you are, you are Tyrone's sons. You are Ty Maurice's son, uh, son and daughter. In other words, you are children. We don't want them to live up to anyone's expectation. We say amen up here. Nobody said amen out there, right? We want them to live their lives, right? Um, but these kids were like, these were perfect kids, if you will. Well, how do I know that? Because the Bible says that they were blameless. It says that they were righteous. That means that they were in right standing with God, and they were blameless. Like, you could find no fault with them. Whatever the Lord said, they did. Now, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. They weren't perfect, but they did everything the way that they were supposed to do things. And when they messed up, they knew how to repent, they knew how to bring the sacrifices. That's what it means when you're in right standing. Like I just finished reading, quoting earlier. When we slip and we mess up, we confess he is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse. That puts us what? In right standing with again. So we're righteous in the sight of God. So these were people who were righteous, people who were blameless. These are people who did everything right. Yet the scripture says something about them. Verse 6 and 7 tells us, but yet with all of that good stuff, she was childless. She was without a child. Now, why is he saying that? Because obviously she wanted a child, which we'll get to in a little bit. But she was without a child. Now, you would think that someone who does the right thing all the time, 
Someone who's righteous in right standing with God. Someone that people look at and go, man, that girl, that boy, he's blameless. Surely they get everything that they ask of God. Surely they do. But yet, throughout Scripture, not just here, but throughout Scripture, we never really see that, do we? This is why it's so important for us not to put that weight on ourselves as if we don't have because we're not doing. A lot of times we don't have because it's not God's will. Amen. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? Just say amen if you are. All right? Zechariah, would, what he would do is he, he was part of this priesthood. And so it was like they say 20,000 plus priests that would serve in the temple. But obviously they couldn't all serve at one time because there's not enough chores, you know, duties for them to serve at one time. So it was four divisions. And those divisions, they were like reserves. And they were called up. So twice a year for one week that they would go and that they would serve. So again, we have a guy here. Think about this for a second. Who's childless, right? His wife is unable to conceive. And in that time, when a wife was unable to conceive, do you know he had the right to Traditionally speaking, to even uh, uh, divorce her? Oh, it was bad back then. Why? Because, hey, you don't have a child. Children are a gift from the Lord. So if you don't have a gift from the Lord, maybe you're not doing something right. Maybe you're considered sinful. You're a sin in your life. There's something you're not doing right. The fact that you don't have a child, that was the mentality of people back then. And so again, but yet we read that these people are what? Blameless. They're righteous. So he could have dismissed them, but notice, brothers, he didn't do that. He could have just said, you know what, I'm going to find me a young girl. I'm going to get somebody who can give me a child. But no, no, no. He was supportive of his wife who was unable to have what it is that they both were believing for. He didn't abandon her. He was supportive of her. He was with her, not just physically, but emotionally to help her get through what it is that she was going through. That's what this righteous man was doing. He didn't just quote scriptures. He lived that out as he supported her and stood by her. And he was with her, not just physically, but emotionally. Thank you for the one amen from the one brother. <laughs> so he wasn't just with her physically. <laughs> he said, listen, until I get some amens, we're going to stay right here. Gonna... But he supported her emotionally. He was right there with her, amen. right? Amen. As she was willing to be supported. Amen. Now I got some amens, huh? As she was willing to be supported. But yeah, he could have done that, but he didn't do that. He stood right by her side, was there to encourage her. And to help her through all this. And now you would think, right? Because you just got to remember, put yourself there. There's a lot of disappointment there. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that there's, there's some disappointment there? There's some disappointment there. But do you realize here, even with the disappointment, what they did not do is they did not abandon their God. Because where do we find him? We find him on duty. We find him in the temple. We find him in, the, and not only just in the temple, he's in the, holy, he's in the holy place. Imagine, he's there doing the work of the Lord, even though he's disappointed, which again, for you and for me, this is, this is for us to remind us, hey, listen, just because things don't happen the way we want it to happen, when we want it to happen, it doesn't mean that we should shuck or, re, uh, uh, you know, get, do away with the responsibilities that we have, which is to serve the living God. Are you all with me? He's on duty. He didn't allow his disappointment to stop him from doing that which God called him to do. Because he understood that despite, in spite of me not having, God is still a good God. Yeah. Are you all with me one more time? Just say amen if you are. Amen. All right? He's still on duty. And, he, and here's the thing. While he's on duty, because I'm going somewhere with this, while he's on duty, doing what it is he's called to do, he's able to go into the holy place to light the, at the, the incense and the altar of incense. But how was he able to do that? Because remember, it was so many of them that so many of them were not, not all of them were able to do the functions that were in the temple. So it was that they had to cast lots to do it. In other words, in our vernacular, they had to throw some dice, roll some dice. Reminds me of my time at James Madison High School in the cafeteria in Brooklyn, how the guys would be back there. You knew what was going on. It was a big crowd. It was like a little wall so the teachers couldn't see. But the guys were like, yo. <laughs> None of you know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> they used to roll dice. Thank you, somebody over there. I appreciate it. They went to James Madison High School with me. That's right. They used to roll dice. And so, come on, lucky number seven. All right. So, in other words, like when you go to Atlantic City, <laughs> And you pull that thing out, now you understand what I'm talking about, right? So you're just hoping for those sevens. Anyway, the point is that it just so happened that when they rolled those die, guess what? It landed on him. Now, this is, like, this is only once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for most of these priests. And sometimes it didn't happen at all because there were so many of them. But it just so happened to land on him. But how many know with God, nothing just happens? There's no luck. There's no chance. It's ordained by God. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33. Look at the verse up there on the screen. It says, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. So don't you ever, as a believer, say, you know, I was just lucky. No, man, you were blessed. 
God ordained that. God caused it to happen. It fell on you because God wanted it to fall on you. It closed on you because God wanted it to close on you. And if you didn't feel it want, that God wanted to close, then pray again because God will open what's supposed to be open for you. And he will close what's supposed to be closed to you. You may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. So while he's there doing something that the dice fell on him, the lots fell on him, he's now able to go into the the holy place lighting the altar of incense, which is so significant for where I'm going with this this thought today. And while he's there, an angel startles him. An angel, this is the, listen, this is like the best gender reveal ever. (laughs) I'm serious. You have never had a gender reveal like this right here. You know, look, 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 look what it says here. Let me just read this, okay? The angel appears, right? And first of all, look, notice what the angel says. He says, don't be afraid. Why? Because he was startled. He was like, oh, my God, right? That's why when people say to me, yeah, you know, I was talking like this angel, and we had this conversation, and really? How'd it go? It was so lovely. No, you didn't have no conversation, no angel. <laughs> You're like, you weren't startled, you weren't scared. No, he came, he talked, he said, he pulled right next to me. 911? Yeah, we have a situation here. <laughs> Every time I read the scripture when an angel appeared, you know what? They were all startled. This is why all the angels said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. They were all startled. Now, I didn't say the conversation didn't end right where, you know, it was a nice casual conversation. But the first reaction is, oh, my God, what happened here? Now, I want to make sure I'm careful with that because the scripture also says, be careful how you entertain strangers because many have entertained angels without even knowing it. So they can come in human form as well. All right? But notice, the angel comes, he's afraid, but then the angel has some news. Like I said, best gender reveal ever. Here, are you all with me? Here's what it says. He says this. He says, he tells him that they're going to have a son. So right off the bat, before she's even pregnant, bro, you're going to have a son. Cool. I know how to do the registry right now. I want baseball bats. I want footballs. I want that, right? Just, that's, that's good right there, right? Best gender reveal ever. We don't have to, you know, figure this thing out. He goes on to say, your name, you're to name him John. So he has a name. He will be a joy and delight. Drop the mic. He's going to be a what? A joy and delight. That's all I need to know. Kid ain't going to give me no headaches. We're good. No such thing as terrible twos. We are good. All right? Teenage years, he's going to do his work. He's going to get straight A's. Teacher's not going to call me. That's what's up. He goes on. He says, he says he will be a joy and delight, and many will rejoice because of him. Wow, he's going to be somebody. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit before he is born. He will be used by God to bring people back to the Lord their God. He's going to be used by God? He will prepare the way for the Messiah. Be like Elijah. Turn parents' hearts to children. Turn their disobedience to righteousness, and he will prepare the people for the Messiah. Say, what? So you're telling me. My kid is going to be all that and some? Yes. Now, you and I would hear that. We're rejoicing that, right? Because, I mean, especially if you've been a parent, you're like, that's what's up. Kid's going to do everything right, get good grades. Everybody's going to be rejoicing because of him. That's your son. Yo, yo, you got a good one there. Nothing like hearing that, right? So you would think after hearing that, this priest who grew up in the things of God, who understand about God, who has prayed for people, You would think this priest would say, thank you, Lord. No. He says this. Yo, why are you playing games? I'm just trying to use what we would say. Because that's what he said. He goes, come on now. Dude, I'm old. And my wife, and just in case she hears this, because women always hear this. I don't want to be sleeping on the couch. My wife is advanced in age. Make sure you repeat it just the way I said it, Okay. So how are you telling me we're going to have a son when I'm old and she's advanced in age? You see how it could be, brothers and sisters? Imagine, again, he grew up in the things of the Lord, right? He grew up uh, with the things of the Lord. Parents raised him in the right things of the Lord. He would do the functions of that which a preacher is supposed to do. And yet, he's now doubting. It's like, yo, my man, don't you read the very word that you proclaim? Do you just talk about Sarah, or do you know what happened with Sarah? Do you know about Rebecca? So you got one that was old. And by the way, you old? Abraham was older than you. Isn't that the father of your faith? The, the fact that you're in the temple that God told him would be built one day, and you're now saying that how can this be when I'm old? See, it's not enough to just believe in God. You got to believe God, brothers and sisters. Come on, let's put our hands together and say amen to that. It's not enough just to believe God. You got to believe, believe in God. You got to believe God. 
Because what is he doing here? He's, he's looking at the, at the human element of it all. I'm old. This can't happen, man. Maybe once upon a time, but it ain't happening now, Jack. And I like what the angel said. I told you, sometimes that Brooklyn comes out of me. And the angel said, yo. Do you think I'm kidding? Read what it says. He says, I am Gabriel. See, that's how we do. That's how you put some respect on my name. That's what that's about right there. It's like, yo, do you understand who you're talking to? Like, I am Gabriel. Like, I, I stand. This is what he said. I stand in the presence of God. See, Michael comes. He does damn. Michael comes. He fights. He's warring. I'm coming with good news. Who you, who you think you're talking to? I'm telling you this good news. I'm letting you know this is what God is saying about you. This is what God's going to do for you and your wife. Do you just preach it and not believe it? Do you just come to church and sing, but you don't believe what you sing? Do you just hear a message and it gives you a good feel, but you don't walk out saying, I know God's going to do that for me? That's what he's getting at here. Because you're performing, and I'm grateful you're on duty. But do you understand there's a word for you? And this word is for you and your wife, but yet you're saying you're too old. Yet you're forgetting about the people in Scripture who were too old. You're forgetting about the people in Scripture who didn't have resources. You're forgetting about the people in Scripture that they were believing, and it didn't happen when they thought it was going to happen, but it happened nonetheless. You all still with me? I didn't lose you, did I? And what he says to him is that everything that I said to you is going to happen, but it's going to happen at an appointed time. At an appointed time. Because it's not your timetable, it's not my timetable. I can say this every week and it will still hit home. Because unfortunately, we live on our timetable. As if, God, you serve me. So now what's up? This is what we need, God. I need you to do this by this time. Because if you do it by this time, then this will happen. And then so-and-so will connect with me on this day. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. It works when you show up. God calls the lot to land on you. And when the lot lands on you, now you're able to do what it is God's called you to do. Are you all with me? Let's move on with this here. Because this is important now. And it says this. It says now, remember, he's deaf, right? Because he couldn't hear and he couldn't speak. So this is what really stood out to me. Because I'm thinking when he came out, he couldn't even perform the priestly blessing. He couldn't even say, the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine, you give you peace. He couldn't even say that. He was making all kinds of signs. They're looking at him like, yo, what's up with Zach? Like he must have saw a vision of something. Something's going on with him. What kind of sign language is that he's doing? Because they were confused by what happened. They don't know what happened inside. Apparently he didn't write it down for them. So now here's what comes to my mind, because now it says this, right? His, his, you're you're going to have a son. Well, you know what? How do you have a son? There's only one immaculate conception. Right. We'll talk about that next week. So now I hear this word that I'm old, she's old, but now I got this word that I'm old and she's old, but what am I going to do with this word that I'm old and she's old? Because the word doesn't work until you what? Work it. It's not enough to be a hearer of the word, but we have to be what? Doers of the word. And we have to act on the word that God has given to us. And so many people, what we do is we hear the word, we hear the word, but there's no motion. There's no movement. God works in conjunction with us, brothers and sisters. And so when God moves you, you got to move. How many are with me? Just say amen. And so I don't know how it went down when he got home because there was no word to be spoken. There was nothing. He couldn't really hear. But how many know there's a, there's a look? He said, girl... And I'm sure he went to touch her. She's like, what are you doing? Because remember, he's old, she's old. So they ain't been doing this. So I was like, what are you doing? But now he's like, it's been a minute, but God gave me a word. And what I can't do is, as funny as this may sound, brothers and sisters, please walk with me on this. What I can't do is sit on that word. I got to move in conjunction with that word in order for that word to take place. So what has God been saying to you and to me that we've been like, I don't know, I don't know, it's been a minute, it's been a while, I don't, I, it, yo, you got to dismiss all of that and you got to just step out and do what it is. And I know it may be awkward because it's been a minute, it's been a minute since you filled out an application, it's been a minute since you've been back to school, it's been a minute since you put in for a promotion, it's been a minute since you went out on a date. 
It's been a minute since you sat down to talk with him or talk with her and say, we got to make this right. It's been a minute, but you got to do what it is that God's putting your heart to do in order to see what it is that God says he's going to bring through. It's been a minute. So goes to do that. The scripture says that she became pregnant, right? And look, six, verse 64, and we're going to almost be done here. Verse 64 says this. She became pregnant, and we know for five months she was secluded. I'm going to get back to that. But now she gave birth. Look at me for a second before you read it. And she gives birth, and everybody comes around. They're like, oh, my God, yo, it's for real. She gave birth at her age. And it says, they said, okay, his name got to be Zechariah. She's like, no. See, even then they disrespect her because they, she said no. And they said, no, no, no. Nobody in your family is named anything other than Zechariah. It's got to be Zechariah. Then he, he, she said, his name is John. Then here comes Zechariah. He says, no, no, no. His name is John. In other words, I'm going to do what God told me to do. Amen. As much as I want my name to go on, because I heard the boy going to be great, meaning he's going to rejoice, meaning on this, I want my name on that. No, 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 no. I got to do what God's called me to do. And what convinced him to do that? I imagine, now you know, walk with me here on this. I imagine what happened was this. When God, when the angel said that you're going to be mute, in other words, you can't speak, I imagine that was proof enough for him that what God says he's going to do, God's going to do. Because think about this for a second. The last time he spoke, he spoke out of doubt. How can that be? I'm old, she's old. The next time he speaks, what is he doing? He's praising God. Now, I, I was struggling with this. I really was struggling with this because I was trying to make the connection. Because for me, and it should be for you as well, I know God doesn't waste ink. So everything is intentional. But, I, you know, sometimes as preachers, what we do is we try to be so spiritual. Oh, it's going to be so deep. And then you realize, yo, it's just, just be real. Just put yourself in the text. How would it be? And so what came to my mind is because I'm, I'm trying to understand, God, why did you, that seems so harsh that you had him mute. He couldn't speak and he couldn't hear. Like, all that, God, it took all that? That, that was me just asking God. I really wasn't, I was questioning, but not questioning, you know what I'm saying? I was like, it really took all that, God? And then I realized, well, wait a minute. He had to be mute, but then it talked about, Elizabeth was secluded for five months. So why was she secluded for five months? And then I, I came out here where they were decorating and said, I think I got it now. I think the Lord made it real to me. See, God had to keep him mute. Why is that? Because Elizabeth was going through her own things. She was secluded for five months. Why was she secluded for five months? Because when she was told and maybe it came back, she realized, okay, I'm pregnant. She realized, you know what, we, but we've been here before. I've been pregnant before. I know the joys of being excited about, oh, my God, we're going to have a child only for a month or two months later to lose the child. I know it's like to get our hopes up that we're going to, this is where we're going to put the crib and this is how we're going to do this. But then only to find out that, you know, it just didn't work out this to lose the baby. Man, I tell you, I, I, my heart goes out to every woman and men because men go through this as well when there's a miscarriage or you're unable to get pregnant. I've counseled women, and I've messed up royally in the beginning, not, not having empathy because I'm a man and not fully understanding what they go through. But there, there's all types of pain, but that's a real pain when it's happened one time, two times, three times. I know a couple, they just said, that's it. They're not even intimate anymore. Why? Because they, we're tired of the disappointment. So the husband told me over breakfast one day, I'm just tired of the disappointment. So that's a real pain that they have. So I can understand. I get emotional about this because I sit across with people that I hear their pain. I can only, I can just imagine she's like, you know what? I, I'm thankful, God, for what you're doing. But just in case, I don't want people getting all happy for me just to be disappointed again. If I'm going to be disappointed, I'm going to be disappointed by myself. But I like what the scripture says, but she was speaking and praising God the whole time. Can you imagine the whole time? She's just speaking like, oh, God, I thank you for this baby in my womb. I thank you for John. His name is John, right? God, you're gonna, his name is going to be John. He's going to, oh, God, you're going to use him. To, every day, you're going to use him. And the devil's probably lying, and you're going to lose it again. You're going to lose it again. No, no, because God's going to use him. The last time God spoke was 400 years ago. 400 years later, God chooses to speak to me and my husband. No, God, I know you're going to protect this child. She's just thanking God the whole time. And so now why did, why did God have Zechariah mute? Because you know what? Zechariah was a man who doubted. And there's power in the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
You can either speak life into someone or you can speak death into someone. And what God could not have is have this man who has doubt speaking to someone who's already wondering, questioning, are oh, you going to go through it? Because if he continues to, are you okay? Is everything okay? Sit down. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. You'll stress the woman out, man. And it could cause her to lose the baby. So God protects his word. Are you all with me? We won't know till we get to heaven. And nothing I said takes away from the text. Nothing at all. But I just, as I put myself there, I just thought that's got to be it. Just got to shut him up. Because too much doubt. Here an angel stood and told him what's going to happen. He's like, how? So surely he's going to go back. And if she just burps wrong, if she, you know, if she does something wrong, like, girl, what you doing? Stop. You're doing too much. Stress the woman out, cause her to lose the baby. But I love the fact that what God did was in the sixth month of her pregnancy, musicians, if you come, he sent now a Gabriel to Mary, which we'll read about next week. And it was there, he told her how she was going to become pregnant, but not by a man. She says, like, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. May it be unto me as you say. And here's what he said, though. This is so key. He says, even your cousin Elizabeth is in her sixth month of pregnancy. So now you go. I mean, he said that. And so you know what she did? She got up and she went right to where she was. Immediately she went to Elizabeth. And the Bible says that when they saw each other, immediately the baby within Elizabeth's womb began to leap. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit at that moment. Like, yep, he's still there. Yep, he's alive. Everything God birthed in me, guess what? It's going to come out of me. And so they were able to encourage one another. For three months, they were together. Can you imagine? Yeah, girl, look. Yeah, girl, look. I know God did this. I know, right? I mean, but I thought I was too old. And when he came and put his hands on me, girl, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> but he heard from God. That's what he was doing. He heard from God, and he acted on that word from God. And so they were able to encourage each other for those three months. So now let me get to this last thing here. Because unbelief is an insult to God when you say that you know God. Because it's as if we're denying his word and the power of his word. That's what it's like. And I want to say to you today that God is going to do for you what he's promised you. Because I know for many of you, I'm trying to hold it together here. <laughs> I've heard you. I've talked with you. And every year you're told, this could be my best Christmas. And you're still waiting on that best Christmas. Every year you're told, this is going to be the year, there's going to be a breakthrough in the relationship. And you're still waiting on that breakthrough. Maybe you've been told, this is the year God, God, you know, God's going to, you're going to be pregnant. And time has come and time is gone. Maybe this is the year that, you know what, you've, you said, you felt, you know, that you need to apply. You need to fill out the application. You need to go for the promotion. But every year you go, you get denied. And someone who just came on the job gets skipped over you. And you're like, you know what, I'm just ready to give up. And at this point, I've been on the job for so long. You know what, they, they just want the younger people. And you may feel like it's over. But the Lord has this word for you today. Verse 13 tells us this. The angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Ready? Your prayer has been heard. I want to say it again. This is the closing thought here. Your prayer has been heard. Let's go back into the story. Why would Zechariah say, I am old and she's well advanced? Because he stopped praying. It's like that, that ship has sailed. I prayed for that. I'm not going to keep praying for something that I know won't happen. And that's where we all go wrong. We all stop praying when we never heard God say, stop praying. Until God says, no, you keep going. You keep praying. You keep seeking. That's why the scripture says, keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. You don't stop until God tells you to stop. So here, here he is, and the angel says to him, this is what's going to happen. He's like, how can this be? It's because he stopped praying. He stopped believing. And the Lord wants to say to us today for this Christmas, hey, listen, the Lord has heard your prayer. Don't you give up. Christmas is about hope. And God is saying to us today, keep 
hope alive. I have heard your prayer. It's not by accident. Let's go back. It's not by accident that the lot landed on him. It's not by accident that he ended up doing what? He wasn't at the labor. He wasn't over here. The uh, table, well, he was the table show bread and all that. But no, he was in front of the altar of incense when the angel shows up. What does that altar of incense represent? I'm so glad you asked. Psalm 141. If you could put it up, please. It says, accept my prayer as incense offered to you. As incense offered to you. So imagine, the smell is going up to God, right? This incense is like prayer. It's like prayers that goes up to the Lord. And the Lord smells it, and the Lord sees it, and the Lord smells it. He takes it in, and he says, may my prayer be as incense offered to you. Because that's what those incense represented there. It was symbolic of that. Look what it says in Revelation 5, verse 8. It says this, And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are what? The prayers of God's people. In other words, we think, I prayed it, God didn't answer, it's over, I move on. God is like, don't you get it? When you pray, it doesn't go off into space and dissipates. No, it stays with me. I've heard your prayer. I've heard how you've cried out for that. I've heard how you struggle with this and you're looking for breakthrough. Nothing that you've ever said to me gets wasted. This is why the scripture says every word will be accounted for. That includes our prayers. So what we have to know is on that day, God orchestrated the whole thing because God in his sovereignty said today from this bowl, I select this prayer because now it's time for this prayer to be answered. And so where you're giving up, God is saying, hold on, hold on. Don't you give up. Don't you stop. What do you, you, you think, I've forgotten about you? It's like I just shared this Tuesday. It's like, come on, man. I love you. I'm here for you. What do you think communion is all about? We're remembering the death, the sacrifice of our Savior who loved us, that while we were sinners, Christ died. Why do you think he says to pray? Because he wants to hear your voice. Because he wants to come through for you. He wants to show you that he's this heavenly father who loves you so much. But what you got to do is not give up. The Lord has heard your prayer. Proverbs 13, 12 says this. Excuse me. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. That's what we're doing, brothers. Right, right now, brothers and sisters, listen. That longing fulfilled is coming. See, a heart deferred, that means it deferred. means like it's put off, cast off. Excuse me, that's not the devil, I'm just sneezing. So it's just deferred, you know, cast off, because, you know, some people get spiritual, the devil's trying to stop them. No, I just got to sneeze. Um, so it means put off, cast off, right? And so it's like, oh, and then what happens? You get sick, you get anxious, and then, you know, you, you check the bank account. Did it come through? Oh, it's not there yet. And you check the, the, the board. Did they, did they sign me up? No. You, you check. It, 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 everything just makes you anxious. A heart deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. And that's what I believe God is saying to us today. That you know what? That longing will be fulfilled. In other words, we'll get our vigor back. We'll get the strength back. We'll be green leaves once again. Somebody please say amen in this house. Absolutely. Your prayers are not just being wasted. God hears your prayers. And in his time, he's going to answer those prayers. Some man some years ago became famous. He stood up in front of all these thousands of people. I'm not promoting any political party. I'm just telling you what the man said. He said a bunch of things. But the thing that will always be remembered is he said, keep hope alive. And Christmas is about keeping hope alive. You know, um, Zechariah means the Lord remembers. Elizabeth means he keeps his oath. People change it different ways, but that's really the gist of it. He keeps his oath. And you know what uh, John means? It means the Lord is gracious. Boy, what a, what a beautiful family the Lord set up for us to just read about today. Because basically, if you put it all together, right, the Lord remembers to keep his oath, and the Lord is gracious to you. And I want to say to you, the Lord has heard your prayer. If you didn't remember anything else I said, verse 13 should be the thing that you remember. The Lord has heard your prayer. It doesn't matter how long ago you prayed it. He heard it then, and he may answer it now. And listen, just to be careful, he may not answer it now. It may be next year. It may be five years from now. You're like, Tyrone, that's too long. No, it's not. 
Because at the appointed time, John the Baptist came on the scene, preaching repentance, causing hearts to be turned back to God. People repenting, being baptized, being ready for the true baptism, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were open to the kingdom of God, this message. Why? Because he was preparing the way for who? Jesus. Because see, when God answers prayers, here it is, and I'm ending, I promise you, when God answers prayer, it's not about you. He doesn't answer prayer based on what you want and what you feel you need. He bases, he answers prayer based on his purpose. The reason why John came into the world, because God had a purpose for John, to use him to turn the hearts of many back to himself. When people say God wants to make you happy, God can make you happy, but that's not his end goal. His end goal is to use you for his purpose. Come on, brothers and sisters, think about this for a second. Are you kidding me? If it was just about being saved, then you know what? The moment you say yes to Jesus, that's it. You go to heaven. Case closed. No more temptation. No more fighting in the spirit. Fighting with the flesh. Nobody dealing with people. No, he leaves you here. He leaves me here because there's a purpose for our lives. And anything that he gives us must suit his purpose. So when you say, I don't have, why isn't God giving me? Because it doesn't suit his purpose. Ty Tyrone, that's harsh. No, that's called being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We got to grow up. It's not about us feeling good. It's about us being used for its purpose. But don't you give up and think to yourself that, well, maybe it's not God's purpose. Did he tell you that? Because if he didn't tell you that, then you keep praying. You keep believing. You keep hoping. And don't be like this guy, like I've been. Don't be that person who, you know what, like before I came out here the first service, it took me a while to come out here. You know why? Because I said, God, I'm about to say something that I need help believing myself. There are things, God, I got saved in 1990, but there are things I prayed for in 1992. 30 years ago, God, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm believing, God, that you heard me. And God never said no, so I know it's going to come to pass. I'm going to keep hope alive. This Christmas, the Lord is saying to you, keep hope alive. I've heard your prayer. Will you bow your heads with me, please? I know I ended a little... Well, it could be seen as harsh there. But I wouldn't be a good brother, friend, pastor to you if I told you what you wanted to hear and didn't tell you what God's word says. He gives us things based on his purpose for our lives. And today, I believe with all my heart, the Lord is saying to you, keep hope alive. I've heard your prayer. If you're here today, and you would say, Tyrone, same way you're standing, brother, I'm standing too. That I need to keep hope alive regarding some things that I prayed for a long time ago. Maybe it wasn't yesterday, maybe it was last year, maybe it was 10 years ago. But the Lord is telling you, keep hope alive. I want you just to stand where you are. I just want to pray for you. Those of you who would say this for me, just pray, just stand right where you are. We want to pray for you. Keep standing. And just like this morning, too many to call forward for the altar. So would you just lift your hands right where you are? Father, I thank you for every man and woman that's standing here today. God, we are all standing here saying, not my will, but your will be done. And at the same time, Lord, we're saying thank you, Lord, for reminding us that our prayers have been heard by you. The devil wants us to think that you've forgotten about us. The devil wants us to think like even as those women in those days thought that your favor is not on us because we don't have. But we understand through your word that the devil is a liar, the father of lies. Today we stand on the authority of your word, God, and that is the things you dropped. Many of us, if you think you dropped things in our heart, we're going to stand on your word and believe you for it, God. Even though, God, we're beyond that season in our own mind, we're going to trust that it's the season according to your timeline. I thank you, Lord. That your word is clear that you who began a good work will be faithful to complete that work. So, Lord, if you drop the seed, then, Lord, you're going to water the seed, God. And, God, you're going to cause the seed to grow. So those who are believing for restoration, God, restore. Those who are believing for financial breakthroughs, Lord, bring it. Those who need healing, bring healing, God. Those who are believing for a greater ministry, God, then do it, Lord, I pray. And, Lord, as always, we know, Lord, it's not for us. It's for you. The restoration of the relationship speaks about the power of God able to take that which is broken and mend it once again. 
The financial blessing, Lord, would only say to the world the fact that we have a God, as Pastor Moyes prayed, who is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for our every needs, that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You're a God who heals what doctors say is impossible. It reminds us like Christmas does that what is impossible with man is definitely possible with God because nothing shall be impossible for those who believe. So God, have your way today. Remove the negativity and the doubt, God. Lord, if you have to cause us to shut up, then Lord, like you did with Zechariah, God, and as you said in the Psalms, cause our tongues to cleave to the roof of our mouths if we dare say anything against what it is you've spoken to us, God. So we thank you today, Lord, for this story with Zechariah and Elizabeth, grateful for John the Baptist. And most importantly, now we're grateful for what you're going to do in terms of the John the Baptist you're going to bring forth in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. amen. God bless you. So come on, on the count of three, let's say that nice and loud. Ready? One, two, three. Keep hope. Come on now. Y'all got to say it like, come on. Ready? One, two, three. All right, now before you go, where's Pastor Maurice? Where do you go? Where's Pastor Maurice? Is he there? Okay. He's downstairs. I missed him. I'm sorry. I thought he was good. There he is. Come here, Pastor Maurice. Come here, sir. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Hurry up. People are already mad at me. I'm holding him beyond the time. Victoria, today is your birthday. Yes, it is. I know everything, sis. The Lord showed me. I'm like an angel. See, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Pastor Maurice celebrated his birthday on Thursday, right? And Victoria's birthday is today. Can we just say happy birthday to them? Come on. Happy birthday. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. See you Tuesday, God willing.